millennials, Gen Y, we're living in a time of great and extraordinary opportunities and challenges. We actually have real issues that are going to destroy our, our world, right? We have climate change. We have terrorism, conflict. If our parents had to contend with the Cold War, we'll have to fight climate change. We might die in the end. And yet, I'm always reminded, there are pe older people always tell young people, young people don't care. Generation Y, millennials are narcissistic, selfish. You know, we don't care about the world. And pundits around the world always talk about youth apathy. It's this myth that because people don't care, nothing will ever change. And they point to this thing which I, I worry. They point to elections. They talk about the, the decline in, in the global youth vote. In the United States, more than half of the young eligible voters did not vote, leading to Donald Trump. In the UK, during the Brexit referendum, half of the young people chose to stay at home, leading to Brexit. In Malaysia, in Malaysia, in our own backyard, critics are raging about the 1.7 million unregistered voters. And yet, we're reminded of images that fly in the face of the global youth decline. There are parts of the world where young people, as young as yourself, fighting for the soul of their beloved nations. In the Middle East, and I know some of you here are from the Middle East, young people were fighting the authoritarian regimes during the Arab Spring at great cost. In Hong Kong, university students as young as yourselves, even younger, had to fight the authorities and demand for greater democracy. And so I, have, I am of the opinion that youth apathy is a myth. And I want to spend the next 10 minutes or so talking about youth apathy, youth, and youth power. How can we unlock, unleash the power within? Before I start, I just want to say that I'm not here to, to sort of propagate this old versus young people you know, dichotomy. I'm not here to talk about young people only. This is for everyone, whether you're young or old, or whatever, we have to activate the young people around us. You have young relatives, young children, friends. We must activate all of these people. The young people approach politics and democracy differently. Our generation tends to be more skeptical of traditional institutions. We tend to be more skeptical of politicians, bureaucracy, and all these boring institutions. Whereas our parents tend to be no, they, they will express their frustrations and disappointment through the ballot box. That's how you got Brexit and Trump. All the people voted. Our generation is a bit different. We turn to what these academics and, and pundits call informal participation. We turn to activism and volunteerism. How many of you here have volunteered for a cause? Raise your hands. Volunteered in any form whatsoever. Many of you have, right? And many of you may not realize that actually when you've been to an event, when you've sort of volunteered for something, you actually have volunteered. That's the difference. Young people are volunteering at a scale never been seen before. According to the Commonwealth, they have this Youth Development Index. They've shown that there's a rise in volunteerism by young people at the rate we have never witnessed in human history. And for example, I'm part of this glo global citizen movement which has 7 million members, mostly young, and we have taken over 11 million actions for the past few years to pressure world leaders to, earn, to end world poverty by 2030. Even in our country, there are so many NGOs and movements that are changing the landscape, fighting for things that matter to all of us. The bad news is this, and whenever I read this piece of information, I just feel horrible. According to the Asian Foundation in a 2012 youth report, it said only 39% of young people feel we can make a difference in our country. An overwhelming 61% of young people feel powerless, hopeless, and helpless. Now I have a confession. Before I continue in this very lecture, serious style, I have a confession to make. I was actually one of those 61% of young Malaysians. 
and I'm only 27. And I remember when I was 21, I was part of the statistics, 61% of young Malaysians. Growing up as a kid, I was timid. Uh, I was afraid of taking risks and venturing out of my comfort zone. And as a student, you know, high school, university, I was an average guy, you know, never excel in sports or extracurricular activities. My wife is here, she can attest to this. I'm just an average guy, you know, nothing special. Until something happened in university. A friend saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And he came to me one day and said, Zayim, you, you, you had this very interesting way of presenting, you know. M maybe, you know, public skill was my only raw talent that I had. And he said, why don't you run for student elections? And I said, no, of course not. I'm not going to run for these weird things. It's boring. Nobody likes student politicians. Nobody likes all this stuff, right? But he said, no, it's not about politics. It's about making a difference in your campus. And he said, why don't you join? And I remember I told him, I took a long day to think about this. And I came back to him and I said, um, friend, I have three reasons why I can't run for this position. And number one, I said, I had zero leadership experience. I never joined the Scouts, never joined the Red Cross. And I was such a rookie, I thought meeting minutes meant counting a meeting in minutes. It was disastrous. Uh, and the second reason I said was, Oof, I, have, I, have, I didn't have many friends. Uh, I had fewer friends than the global average of 338 Facebook friends. Like very few friends. And the third reason I said was, I was too young. I was, 20 year, I, was, I was only 20 years old, impressionable, know nothing, and a green horn. And, so, and, and I also thought, young people, what can we do, right? We're powerless. But he told me, just do it, right? Just do it. So I said, okay, never mind. I ran for the election, and I unexpectedly won. And I remember the day like it was yesterday, 27 August 2011. There I was, I won the election, I won the position, and the position was to oversee 9,000 students. This guy, who had no friends, no leadership experience, and, and, and very little experience. And I worked very hard. I mastered every aspect of student leadership. Everything you can think of, I did it when, when I was in university. And I realized that I transformed as a person from that, that, that timid kid that I was talking about just now to the person I am today. And I, I was convinced that if this thing can change me, it can change anyone. And graduated from university, came back to Malaysia, worked as a full-time professional. And even as a full-time professional, I volunteered for seven NGOs. I led seven NGOs working on various social causes. And one thing that struck me was this. Young people like yourselves, and I know many of you, are passionate about a lot of different things. It could, have, it could be about spoken word, entrepreneurship, activism. But many of you lack the how-to. How do we do these things, right? We know, we know why we're doing it. We know what are we doing, but we don't know how do we do it. And questions like how to write a proposal, how, how to organize a campaign, how to raise funds, how to build a team, were questions that I had to learn the hard way. And I started a platform called Nation Building School, an NGO to teach people these things. But an NGO to teach young people how to master the art of citizenship. How can we make a real difference? And for the past two years, we've done over hundreds of leadership programs. We've engaged over 3,000 young people, and they have gone on to make history in Malaysia. Many of them have started their own businesses, their own campaigns, their own NGOs. They have trained other people. They have changed the world the way I see it. And this is where I witness youth power firsthand. Youth power. Youth power, as I see it, is your ability to make a difference. All of us as citizens have innate powers within us. If you look at it, right, most countries in the world have this thing called constitution. And constitution sets out your rights as citizens. And, and these rights include freedom to religion, expression, speech, and assembly. The fact that we can have TEDx UTP today is because of freedom of expression. Because I, I realize many, many patients like to say, oh, there's no freedom, there's no freedom. You know, there's no, this, this thing doesn't exist. But I like to argue, right, Malaysia is an open society. It's an open society because people like yourselves can actually make a real contribution. That whatever you do actually makes a difference. That is why it is an open society. The problem is this, open societies are never guaranteed. That's why you have to keep exercising your rights. And the powers that be, the people that control the universe and the world, human beings, not God, human beings that control the world, they sometimes give us a little bit of power. There's this thing called elections. So every now and then we have this thing called elections. 
An election essentially means leaders giving you a piece of paper and telling you, vote for the people that you want. And I mean it on paper, right? It's only in principle. Whether it happens or not, we don't know. But they tell you, I'm going to give you that power. But I want to go further than that. I don't want to talk about elections and all these traditional institutions. I want to talk about youth power. And I want to introduce this concept called community organizing. If you think about Barack Obama, when he started out as a university student, and when he graduated, he became a community organizer. These people are people that felt activated from within, organize the community, and works towards a, uh, a certain social cause. If you look at iconic movements led by Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, they were all community organizers, ordinary people like you and I. And organizing is a scary word. Because every time I say community organizing, they tell me, well, I'm not a community organizer, I can't do it. But you do it without even knowing. If you have organized a birthday party, you are, you are a community organizer. If you have organized a, a dinner date with your boyfriend and girlfriend, you are an organizer. Organizing is a way of life. And I want to share three things, the three C's on how can you unlock, unleash your youth power. Three C's. The first C is cause. C-A-U-S-E, not C-O-S-T, cause. Everyone here cares about something. If you, you, you can see, by the way, I'm presenting, I care about young people, but not, of you, not all, all of you here care about this thing that I'm worried about, right? I'm, I understand that many people here care about different things. That's why you came to TED, to hear ideas worth spreading. There are many, there are many issues out there that may, many of you care, right? There is immigration, environment, global warming, aging population. These are all things that you care. And I I'd like to invite you to quickly think about the one thing that you care the most, something bigger than yourself. Now hold on to that cause, the first C. The second C, community. Now, Gautam mentioned something that I wanted to say earlier, which is tribe. You have to work with the community, but you do it in your tribe. You have to do it in your tribe. In my case, I've had to work with universities, government agencies, businesses, everyone. And my major stakeholder is actually the 8 million, 8 million young people your age. They are eight, between 18 to 30 years old, there's 8 million of you in this country. That's a huge amount. And I have spoken to thousands of young people, everyone from LGBT networks, conservative Muslims, socialists, anarchists. I've spoken to everyone. And I understood one thing, right? I've understood their hopes, dreams, and fears. So if you care about a certain cause, you have to find your community, find your tribe, and find out what worries them the most. And it's very easy to find your particular community. You just have to look. I started by looking for my community online. So I went on Facebook, quickly looked at the events that were being organized, and just attended all of these events, and I found where I wanted to go. The third and final C is campaign. Campaign. When I say campaign, people think, of political campaign. I don't mean that, I don't mean political campaigns. I mean campaigns is defined simply as a series of actions that leads to a particular outcome. If you look around you, there are many campaigns being run. I think when you were young, there were many campaigns. I think when I was growing up, there was a campaign to love our rivers. Not, the, not, not my most favorite campaigns. And I, the, a recent campaign is Undi 18. A group of young Malaysians want to lower the voting age from 21 years old to 18 years old. I'd like to share a story about a recent graduate from my NGO, Nation Building School. His name is Hilmi. Now, Hilmi is like many of you, but Hilmi is not your ideal leader, lead, leader type of person, right? He, he's not the ideal person. He, he told me he suffers from severely acute, critical, slow self-esteem. And, and I remember Hilmi, uh, he told me one, one day, he said he wants to join the campaign to end uh, child sexual abuse. If you remember last year, a local media outlet, The Star, ran a campaign to protect underage children from sexual predators. And he joined this campaign. And he told me when he started this campaign, didn't have any friends, you know, he, he started out from scratch. And he told me he wants to bring his community together. And so he engaged The Star, he engaged Lisa Suryani, he engaged celebrities, community organizers, he engaged everyone to talk about the campaign in his campus. And he organized a forum that brought 400, 400 people to talk about, this camp talk about this issue, and they, they were even victims that shared their story. People were crying in this forum. I couldn't believe it. People were crying, and you know, it was a, such an impactful event. 
But Hilmi's campaign was only one. And obviously, when you're doing a, a, in only one campus, you can't make a difference. Also, the pundits told me, right? You can't make a difference. One person, one person can't make a difference. UTP can't make a difference. But they were wrong. Because thousands of people like Hilmi started to organize. And earlier this year, the Malaysian parliament passed a landmark bill to criminalize child sexual abuse. The campaign was a success. The three Cs, if I can repeat it, is cause, community, and campaign. If you don't believe in your youth power, I'd like to share a little bit of story with you. I want to go back to the story of Hilmi. When I first met Hilmi, I asked him what he wanted to do in his life. And he told me, you'll never believe me because nobody believed in me. Nobody believed in me. And I said, don't worry. I, I want to hear what you want to be. And he said he wants to be the governor of the Bank Negara Malaysia, the Central Bank of Malaysia. And I said, why not? And Hilmi offered me three reasons why he couldn't do anything. Three reasons. He said the number one reason, he said he had zero leadership experience. But he knew what meeting minutes meant. The second reason, he said, he had few friends. But he had more friends than the global average of 338 Facebook friends. And the third reason he said he can't do it is that he said he was too young. A 21-year-old student who couldn't make a difference in his environment. And today, two years later, Hilmi is leading his university uh, student council. He's leading my NGO nation meeting school. And he's made a lot of difference in his own sphere. This is my story. This is Hilmi's story. This is our story. I'd like to ask you, what is your story? I'm Zaim. And thank you.